Today, I would like to teach you how to interpret a word problem, and then from that word problem, be able to write the polynomial function. So let's take a look. So it says a rectangle has a length of 10 units and a width of 8 units. Squares of x by x units are cut out of each corner, and then the sides are folded up to create an open box. Express the volume of the box as a polynomial function in terms of x. All right, so first thing on a problem like this, or really any word problem is get a visual, draw a picture. So it tells you that you have a rectangle, right? And it mentions that the length of that rectangle is going to be 10 units, right? So whatever that is, 10 meters, 10 inches, it doesn't make a difference. Um, so you know then the top and the bottom will be 10, right? And then it says the width, well the size basically would be eight units, right? So you plug in your eight there and you plug in your eight over there. Okay. The next thing the problem now tells you is that it says that squares of x by x units are cut out of each corner. It's like, oh my god, x by x, they're giving me letters? Yeah, they're giving you letters, but don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Just think about it. It's telling you that you're going to cut squares. You're going to cut out squares in each corner. So go to each corner, and now you're basically going to cut out a square. Like that. Imagine you take your scissor and you cut this here and you cut that there. Okay? So it tells us now that the squares are measured as x by x units. So in other words, that this side of this square here, right, has a unit, a length of x. And then the same thing about this side. And then remember that would also be the same here, right, etc., etc., and also over to here. Okay? So we're going to cut out squares all throughout each corner of this box. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so this is what it would basically start to look like. However, though, before I actually remove these black corners, I just want to take some length measurements, okay? So we know that the entire length of this side is eight, right? So in other words, from this point straight down and all the way to the end of that side of the rectangle, right? That is eight. Same thing then on the other side, right? Same thing on the other side. So let's just move that on over. Let's just draw these, okay, on in. Same thing about the lengths now, right? The length of the entire rectangle was 10. So I'm going to now take this, make sure I know what exact length is 10. All right. And then same thing with the top, right? I'm going to go halfway, plug the 10 in there. Okay. I'm a little short there, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really make a difference. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to start erasing uh, some of these other, um, these black lines now, okay, to represent the cutout. Okay. So this is basically now what the rectangle would begin to look like. Now, if you had to create an open box, you know, how would you start to now fold up the sides of this box? Well, you would start to fold up, right? You would start to crease this area. Let me see if I can draw that nice and straight, right? You would start to crease this area, okay? You would start to crease here. You would start to crease over here. And then you would start to crease this area. I shouldn't really say area, right? That's a line, oops. So once you start creasing those areas, right? You can almost imagine, oh, those lines. My God, I just said not to do it and I did it anyway. Eh, what are you gonna do? What you're going to do is now you're going to fold this piece up. You can almost imagine it, right? If you were to fold it at this creased line, right? This part would fold up. Same thing here. This whole region would fold up. This would fold up. And then this would fold up. If you have trouble visualizing it, literally take a piece of paper and do exactly this. Start cutting out the squares in each corner and then start folding it. And it'll begin to be clear how this is going to look like an open box. All right. So now the thing is, right, now that we have this folded, right, the, a picture now, remember, this is all visual. This has nothing to do with math at the moment. Absolutely nothing. Okay, this is all visual. What I now want to do is I now want to draw an open box that will represent the lengths and the particular uh, uh, x values that I have in this picture. Take a look. Okay, so there it is. Now, here's a question. What is this length right here? What do you think? Now you really have to visualize this. If your brain goes back to saying, okay, I understand, you know, I see how it would be an open box and 
you know, and then I ask about this length and your mind just goes absolutely blank, just take a minute and just think about it. Okay. Think about what you're doing here. And again, if you have trouble visualizing it, actually take out a piece of paper. Okay. Um, what do you think? Did you mention that this particular length over here would be equal to this length here? Right. If that's what you said, this blue dashed line, if that's what you said, then that would be correct. All right. That would be correct. So now the question is, okay, so now the question is, what is this length? Okay, what is it? Well, we know that it's going to represent this length over here. Okay. It's going to represent that length. Now, how can you find that length? Well, just take a look at the picture now. Take a look at this region. Okay. If you know that the total length of this entire rectangle here was 10. And yet, so that would mean from this point right here, all the way straight down to this point right here, the length was 10. But wait a minute, you cut out now a unit of x on the left hand side, and you cut out a unit of x on the right hand side. So what that must mean then, is that this blue line now is basically going to be 10 units of length minus the x on the left and minus the x on the right. In other words, it would be 10 now minus 2x. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense, right? I mean, you can, you can also think about the actual values, right? Uh, you can plug in numbers for x if you wanted and begin to kind of think about you know, what that might entail. You know, imagine x were to be equal to 1, right? If x were equal to 1 now, and the whole length was 10, then you would basically be taking the length of 10, subtracting 1 here, subtracting 1 from there, and this one would be 8, right? You can kind of envision that. Now, the next question is then, well, what is the length now of this side of the box? Well, guess where that's coming from now? That's coming from this side, right? It's coming from the width now of the box, the blue dashed line over here. So how would you find that now? Remember this blue dashed line, okay, represents this length. Again, the overall length of that side was eight, but then you cut out a unit of X from the top and X from the bottom. So it's basically going to be now eight minus X minus X. In other words, that's going to be eight minus two X. Right? Cool. Now, there's one more piece of the puzzle. Now, why am I even, you know, writing out these lengths and widths? Well, let's not lose sight of the question. Express the volume of the box. So I know that the volume of this box, remember it's open, okay? I know that the volume of this box, or volume of any box, is always going to be the length of the box, times the width of the box, times the height of the box. So I have the length, I have the width. Well, guess what I need now? I need to find the height. Now, if you can really envision this problem, you will know what, what that is. I almost slipped, I almost gave it away. Spoiler alert, I almost said it, right? You will know what that is. Think about it, you're flipping this side up and you're flipping this side up and you're flipping this little piece up and you're flipping this little piece up. What's the height? How high do these sides go? Well, they can only go a height of X, right? Whatever that is. So that would be X. If you have trouble visualizing that, literally again, take out a piece of paper and do it. I promise it'll make sense, okay? So now that I know all the three sides, the lengths, now all I need to do is kind of plug it into my volume formula, okay? So the volume is gonna be the length, which is gonna be 10 minus two X times the width, which was going to be 8 minus 2x, and then times the height, which is x. Now, you can basically leave it like this. I mean, you know, that is a function, okay? That is the volume. If you had to now, you know, uh, get this into like x cubed or whatever you needed, you know, whatever you needed to do, I have no clue. But that's just algebra now from that point, okay? But the whole idea of this problem is finished. This is the function, okay? If you then needed to foil this stuff, you know, you could do then the 10 times the eight, which would be 80, 
then the 10 times the 2x, which would be negative 2x, that is, which would be negative 20x. Then it's the 8, 2 minus the, uh, what am I talking about? I can't even speak. Ne negative 2 times 8 is what, Andrew? It's going to be negative 16x, okay? The negative 2x times negative 2x will be ne uh, positive 4x squared. And then remember, this whole thing would have to then be multiplied by that x on the outside, don't forget, okay? You can combine these like terms, right? So that would be negative now thir uh, thir 36. Wow, what is I need more coffee. That's what I need. Um, so that's going to be negative 36. And then you're going to take this X and distribute it to everyone, right? So I'm going to speed through that. So this is going to be 80 X minus then 36 X squared, then plus 4 X cubed. So if you wanted to write it that way, that's fine. I mean, there's so many ways to do it, right? If you don't like writing the highest power all the way to the right, then just switch the terms, right? And that's some law of addition and subtraction. Who the heck remembers communicative, associative? I don't even know, right? Who, who, who remembers any of that stuff? Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do hope this helps, okay? Um, again, important steps for problem solving. And I don't care if you're doing this problem or you're doing a physics problem or you're doing a chemistry problem, whatever. Or you're, you know, you're, you're a doctor one day and you're diagnosing, right, a certain patient. It... It helps to visualize what's going on. Okay? It helps to visualize. Thanks for tuning in.